let's have a look at how to use Waves Tracked with Smart. And very simplified, we use Smart to analyze how a speaker behaves in a certain environment. Uh, but uh, Smart is only analyzing data. Uh, we can't really do any corrections. Uh, so we use Waves Tracked in order to make corrections uh, with uh, EQ and delay in order to make the, the speaker system behave the way we want it to. So the idea is this. We have a PA, in this case this small uh, Genelec. Uh, we have a measure mic or two. Uh, these mics are connected to Smart for the analyzing part. Uh, and then we connect Smart to Waves Tracked and uh, well, the idea is that we just press a button in Tracked and it corrects everything. Uh, whether or not that works or is the only or best solution, uh, well, let's see. And just to be clear, I'm a mixing engineer, not a system engineer, system designer. So I will show you how to make Tracked work with Smart and how to make the measurements. But there are so much more going into system designing uh, that I will simply not cover in this video. All right, so this is how you would set all of this up. You have the LV1 system that you set up as you normally would. Uh, in this case, my PA will be this uh, Genelec. And I will actually put this in the other room because we will blast some pink noise and that's not really fun to listen to. Then we have the smart system uh, and that's the program smart running on this uh, Mac. Uh, I have connected the external sound card uh, and two measurement mics going into the sound card so that smart can, can do the uh, calculations. Out from the sound card uh, I go into uh, a channel on the LV1 system uh, and we will send pink noise from Smart into uh, the LV1 and out through the uh, Genelec speaker or the PA. And up to that point it's uh, pretty straightforward but then we need to connect Tracked with Smart and uh, in order to do that we need uh, a second uh, network dongle from the host. So in my case uh, my host computer has a, a built-in network uh, connection that I use for the sound grid system. Then I have a USB dongle uh, so I from the USB port I get a second network connection. So that second network dongle uh, is going into uh, this uh, again uh, dongle uh, and into the, the Mac. So I would strongly recommend keeping uh, Mac and ones away from the sound grid system uh, because it will be a problem. But we are not really connected to the sound grid but to the second uh, network uh, port from the, from the host. So uh, this isn't really a part of the sound grid uh, network. So here's a quick overview over all the connections and it's actually quite straightforward. Uh, you set up LV1 as you normally would, you set up your smart rig as you normally would, uh, then you just need an extra uh, CAT cable between the host and uh, the, the computer running smart. All right, let's start with setting up smart. So uh, first thing is to uh, uh, configure the uh, inputs. In this case I used the Vault uh, 2 sound card. So this is uh, uh, mic 1 and oops, this is mic 1. Uh -huh. Let's go again. This is mic 1 and this is mic to. And if you have a correction curve, you can put that one in over here. I have this for this mic, not for this one. Then we need to uh, set the outputs. And again, I use the Vault 2. Uh, and let's just engage both uh, left and right outputs. Uh, and also enable Smart Loopback. Here we go. And then close. 
All right, next thing is to make sure that uh, when we send pink noise, we get it into the LV1 system and out through the speaker. So let's uh, engage the pink noise and actually uh, let's raise this one to I don't know, minus 10 or so. If we take a look at the LV1, we see that Yes, we have pink noise coming in, and if I raise the uh, matrix for the PA, I can clearly hear pink noise. And the way I would set all of this up is that the pink noise is sent directly to the matrix for the PA, not passing through the left-right, because on the left-right uh, I will probably have some EQ, some compression, and some other stuff that I don't really want to be a part of the measurement. And if you want to know more about how to set up matrices, I have a video link up in uh, the corner. All right, so let's send some pink noise and go back to smart. So over here we have the mic one and two, and if we press this uh, arrow, we will see that we have a signal coming in to the system. So right now we are in the uh, spectrum view where we have some uh, real-time analysis of the, of the frequency content. But let's turn this off and go to transfer view. And here we need to set up the uh, transfer engine. So let's press this one and name this TF1, Tra transfer function one. We have the vault to interface, we uh, have the measurement microphone on channel one, and the reference signal should be the, the loopback from uh, monitor left. Let's create this one and then set up transfer two, which is same thing, but we use the other microphone, so uh, like so. And let's make sure that it works. Here we go. And so in order to get a good reading, we need to set some delay compensation. Uh, again, I will not go into depth in how to smart work, but uh, this is the way you would do it. Uh, send some pink noise and then we, you will press find. Let's see. And find delay. It will do some cal calculations and then press insert. Uh, so we have the spectrum view and the transfer function view uh, all set up, it's working. Now we just need to do one more thing, so let's go to preferences, uh, go to the tab API and press enable. Uh, and, nope, enable and press OK. Now let's move into Tracked. All right, so on the matrix, uh, going to the PA, let's insert tracked. And you have two versions of tracked. The one called uh, linear phase will be more accurate, but it will introduce some latency. But in this case, let's go for that one. All right, so this is the startup window for uh, tracked. And as you can see, uh, it says smart, not connected. So let's go up to the, the settings for smart and uh, actually just press this arrow and it will take some time, but hopefully it will find smart and smart not found. All right. Yeah, so for whatever reason, uh, I had to restart smart and then just hit the arrow and uh, everything is synced up. So uh, now smart is uh, found, then we need to press connect and uh, now smart is connected. All right, so here where it says measurement, let's select mic one and press gen to start the generator. And now we will see what the microphone picks up. So let's press capture and turn this off again. Uh, so now we have a measurement of what the mic picks up at that uh, specific uh, place uh, and if that is all we need we can just over here 
choose to, uh, to use Capture One and then press the FIR button and the system will, ca uh, will calculate what each moves to make in order to make this uh, uh, totally flat. And in the simplest of way, this is all you need to do. But obviously that's not the whole truth to, to get a, 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 a flat sounding uh, response in the whole venue. So let's actually turn this off again and let's make one more measurement using the mic 2. Mic 22, well it should say mic 2. Uh, so let's again uh, press the generator. And let's press capture. So now we have uh, two measurements from two different microphones. Uh, so one way uh, of doing things is to uh, select both of these, press merge. And now we have an average of what those two mics uh, pick up. And then we can use Capture 3 to use our FIR filter. And then uh, this would be the, the uh, correction EQ for the merged uh, inputs from those two mics. Now setting things up uh, like this, uh, you would actually just uh, uh, measure what the, the mic uh, hears, but there's no real uh, reference. So uh, probably a better way would be to go uh, on the transfer function. So let's go for transfer uh, one. Let's uh, start the generator and hit play. And let's press capture. So now we have a measurement uh, comparing what's being sent out to what the mic actually picks up. And using uh, this uh, for the, the capture and hitting the FIR, uh, now we will see, let's turn this off, uh, this filter instead. And I will not really go into what's the correct or the best way of doing things. Uh, people smarter than me uh, can do that. But here you can, uh, th there are basically two ways of uh, getting data into tracks. You can use the, the spectrum or the transfer. Um, the spectrum just use what the, the mic picks up. The transfer uh, compares that with what's being sent out. And as you can see, uh, we get uh, two uh, totally different uh, suggestions for the, the filter. This one is for uh, w when, when uh, we uh, use the transfer function and this one, no, sorry, this one is when we just use the microphone. And we can actually manipulate things uh, a bit more if we want. So first of all, we might not want a uh, flat uh, response. We might want uh, some low F boost uh, or even the uh, X curve. I often like not really this X curve, but a, a, a curve that uh, is similar to, to the, the X curve. And uh, this handle will move things uh, up and down uh, in, in uh, uh, amplitude and uh, then we have the handles on on the left side which are basically just setting the the boundaries of how much each you uh, will be uh, applied so maybe you don't don't want any more correction than uh, 3 dBs up or down then you would set the, the uh, handles on 3 uh, then we also have the IIR filters so uh, let's uh, engage one of these uh, and then you can basically uh, add eight more nodes of uh, either flat top or a bell or a shelf curve uh, or a tilt. This I find quite useful. You can just uh, tilt the, the, the whole thing uh, up or down. So basically uh, the FIR filter uh, 
uh, is uh, the suggestion tracks make to to make things uh, follow the the uh, reference curve uh, in this case the the x curve then you can kind of uh, uh, override all of, of that with the uh, eight uh, filters in order to to make the the response uh, as you uh, prefer so yeah these are the the basics and uh, obviously we've just scratched the the surface of uh, system tuning so uh, th there are plenty more to to talk about so if you are someone who actually knows a thing or two about system tuning uh, reach out and let's make uh, an episode where we go more in depth of how to actually uh, set things up and ha how to actually uh, calibrate uh, things in order to have a perfect sounding PA system. All right, take care.